anatomists use precise terms. And the term superficial can mean close to the surface of the body, where deep refers to away from the surface of the body. So in this example, the external iliac artery and vein are deep inside the pelvic cavity, but they then leave the pelvic uh, body cavity to become the femoral artery and vein, which is more superficial. Or when one considers these veins, the great saphenous vein is superficial, being just underneath the skin, while the femoral vein becomes the popliteal uh, vein, which becomes the tibial vein. It's much deeper. Obviously, superficial and deep can then be relative because the great saphenous vein is deep to the skin, but superficial to the popliteal vein. In this image, most of the gray matter of the cerebrum is in the superficial cerebral cortex, the first couple millimeters uh, near the surface of the cerebrum. But there is also gray matter deeper within the cerebrum in deep basal nuclei. In this image, the vas deferens is very superficial, just deep to the skin as it passes uh, through the spermatic cord. But once the spermatic cord enters the inguinal canal, the vas deferens then goes around the ureter and bladder and now is much deeper compared to its superficial position in the spermatic cord. One can use superficial and deep with layers of the skin. So for example, the epidermis is the superficial layer of the skin while the dermis is deep to the epidermis. In muscles, often some muscles lie over others. And so for example, in the forearm, one could look at the superficial muscles and then after cutting those and reflecting them backwards, see the deeper muscles underneath them. For example, in the hip region, the gluteus maximus is superficial. Once removed, one can fully see the gluteus medius, which is deep to the gluteus maximus. But if one were then to reflect the gluteus medius, one could then observe the gluteus minimus, which is deeper still.